Session 2, South American Civilization, 10,240 to 5,114 years ago. Just as from the Middle East, the Hebrew Bible records the story of creation of the cosmos, the creation of humans, and so forth in Genesis, so too does the Popol Vuh, the South and Mesoamerican equivalent literary collection of mythology. We can enter historical records of civilization in this region at approximately the same time as we can see earliest civilizations begin in the Middle East as well, some 10,500 to 7,000 years before now. However, besides the myths describing the historical archetypal characters in the narrative storyline intertwining the various epoch events, from the period prior to the earliest recorded history when the Popol Vuh was first written down, we have many fossil and stone artifacts describing several distinct cultural phases in the civilization of the South American continent. The Popol Vuh record begins after the world flood in the modern era, but before that, besides the relics that remain, the Popol Vuh's content is merely conjecture. We begin with the earliest known signs of civilization in South America, in the modern nation of Peru. Here we see, from a distance of several hundred feet above the ground, one of the massive Nazca lines, designed by assorting colored pebbles that stretch for hundreds of miles across the dry, windless desert. Some of these monumental geoglyphs take on configurations of unilinear illustrations in the style of primitive petroglyphs, like a zodiac of pre-alphabetic hieroglyphics. This single consecutive outline of a figure seems to show a monkey with a tail that becomes a spiral marabulus several hundred feet in diameter. Again, seen from a height of several miles above ground, we can look down at this vast geoglyph traced in the desert stones, a unilinear silhouette of two hands, one with five fingers, the other with only four. Hundreds of these types of geoglyphs are etched into the sand across hundreds of miles of the Nazca Plain. They depict all sorts of animal shapes as well as some rudimentary geometric figures, such as the line, the spiral, etc. Little is known about the people who carved these lines, or even when they were originally constructed. However, the remains of terracotta pot shards from the nearby area tell us some about the culture of the people who were, at the least, the Nazca Line's latest custodians. Here we see a vase shaped like a mushroom, painted with lizards, a regular bowl with geometric fish designs, a dual stem vase with figurative birds, and a primitive pipe sculpted to look like a snake. The remains of the people themselves are preserved to this day by a process of desiccating and mummification performed on them at the time of their decease. The mummy we see here wears a patterned beaded headband over long, straight red hair. In the jungles of Peru to the northeast of the Nazca Desert, we find a strange collection of artifacts in the form of carvings on stone many modern archaeologists refuse to accept as authentic relics due to the impossibility of accurately dating their crafting and due to the fact that they can be replicated using modern tools such as the Dremel. Regardless of their authenticity, however, the Ica stones are further shocking in the content of their art. As we can see in these few examples from among the hundreds thus far found in this area, they depict such absolute anachronisms it boggles the scientific mind. A man rides a pterodactyl flying dinosaur. A map of the globe showing South America connecting to Australia between Antarctica and South Africa. An artificial breathing apparatus for keeping a patient alive while performing open torso surgery. An anatomically accurate triceratops quadruped dinosaur. Another map of the globe showing land masses surrounded by their suboceanic tectonic plates. 
a second example of two surgeons performing an open torso inspection. A man with a telescope looking up at a comet. However, even more difficult to explain than the anachronistic Ica stones are the elongated human skulls found throughout South and Mesoamerica, occurring in their highest abundance in the area around Ica in the jungles of Peru. Because there is no evidence in most of these of trephination, the surgical removal of a portion of the skull bones when young that expands the size of the cranial cavity with age, it is still widely believed by anthropologists this deformation was accomplished by tightly tying short wooden boards around the skull from a young age. The cultural purpose of this practice has since been lost to time. The first massively built structure in South America, so far as is known now, is at Tiwanaku in Peru. Here we see the three stelae at the center of the wide courtyard of the Temple of Viracocha at Tiwanaku. Placed facing the entrance to this slightly subterranean courtyard is the stele of Viracocha. At some distance behind this stele is an archway that was not apparently attached to any other structure. This is the gateway of Viracocha. Here we see the carving of him above the gateway signifying him as a feathered serpent. The next sign of prehistoric civilization in South America is the High Andes Mountain Pass Incan city of Machu Picchu in Peru, displaying an advanced level of both architecture and its stepped ar agricultural terraces and its stone masonry in hewing, transporting, and fitting the stones of the city's walls, some of which weigh as much as 10 tons, the same size as the blocks comprising the Great Pyramid at Giza. Machu Picchu was built some 600 years ago, only shortly before the Spanish-European invasion of South America. However, it represents the Incan civilization indigenous to this area from before the origins of recorded history can account. Session 2B Mesoamerican Civilization 5,114 years ago to 2012 year Pythagoras Before we can bring the context of Mesoamerican civilizations up to contemporary dates with the later Incan Empire in South America, we must first consider the Olmecs, who were late contemporaries of the Nazcans and Icans of Peru. The Olmecs once populated the entire Mesoamerican land bridge and the Yucatan Peninsula. However, by the time recorded history began being kept by the Maya in the form of the Popol Vuh, the earliest surviving written record in the area, the Olmec were already mostly forgotten. Their populations dispersed in the south-central jungles of what we today call Mexico. From 3,600 to 2,400 years ago, the Olmec lived in dense populations in a rigid class structure. Their artifacts and relics remaining to this day include, most recognizably, several hundred enormous stone busts scattered throughout the jungle of Mesoamerica. The scale of all of them is identical, though no two look exactly alike. Some depict wrinkled old women, others robust masculine bone structure, but few resemble the appearance of the indigenous people populating the region today. The first great civilization to arise following the downfall of the Olmec society were the Mayans of the Yucatan Peninsula. It was the Mayans, some 4,600 years before now, who codified their hieroglyphic alphabet of ideograms and began keeping the written record that has come down to us today in the form of only a few codices in Mayan script and the Spanish Popol Vuh. In this illustration from one of the surviving codices, we can see one of the main characters from the story's narrative using a blowgun to hunt the Quetzal bird. Below the bird is a vision serpent, identifying again with the archetype of the feathered serpent. From earliest Mayan architecture, we find monumental-sized sets built for the staging of dramatic events 
meant to act out and commemorate the events in the stories of the Popol Vuh's narrative. At Copan, we find the sacred ball court of the Zibalba Bay. It was here the lords of the Mayan underworld entered into the earth down a stairway from the sky. Likewise, at nearby Tikal, the ruins attest to the bold egos of the chiefs who ruled in the names of these Mayan underworld lords. The palaces of the ball court players stand monumentally tall and date as far back as 2,500 years ago. Nearly equidistant from Tikal, as Tikal was from Copan, lay the Mayan observatory temples of Palenque. It is here, in the Temple of Inscriptions, we find the tomb of Pakal Votan, who reigned around 1,300 years ago. On the intricate low relief of the lid of the, his sarcophagus, we see Pakal seated above the demonic bat deity Zots, inhaling ayahuasca from the tree of the crossroads, atop which sits the Quetzal. Around 1,010 years ago, the temple of Quetzalcoatl was erected by the Toltec king of that name at the site of a well long used for human sacrifice. This signified the height of, and the beginning of the eventual decline of, the Mayan culture of the region. The Mayan culture was complex, and its pantheon of deities were illustratively detailed anthropomorphic zoomorphs who controlled various elementary forces on Earth, such as the Bat God, the God of Rain, the God of Death, etc. Their calendrical method was capable of measuring extraordinarily long durations of time, such that their calculations could easily exceed not only the age of the planet Earth, but the galaxy and possibly even the currently known cosmos itself. This system, while elaborate in appearance and application, is simple in its basic component units. A day is called a kin. A weenal, the Mayan month, is twenty kin. A ton is the Mayan solar year of 360 kin. A katun is the square of a ton. A bakton, the square of the katun, and so forth on unendingly. Each weenal in a ton has its own glyph name, and each kin in a weenal has its own unique glyph name. Thus, there are 18 weenals in a ton, with an extra seven Zamakaba Kim days, or unlucky Kim. The method of calculating any given day's relation to any other day, regardless of how far apart they may be on a calendar, was thus a simple string of numbers of which kin, of which weenal, of which ton, of which katun, of which bakton, and so on unendingly. The 19 Mayan months in a solar year work as a cogged gear in this calendar system's machinery. The 13 days of a Mayan week, the 20 days of the Mayan month, the 19 months of the Mayan year, and so forth, all combine to form the overall Mayan calendrical model. The less sophisticated, though more popularly understood, calendrical model that followed immediately from the decline and fall of the Mayan culture was Aztec. The Aztec calendar stone depicts the 20 days of the month around the four seasonal epochs, with the face of Tezcatlipoca standing for the fifth sun in the center. While highly symbolic, this arrangement does not function as a calendrical mechanism. 675 years ago, the Aztecs established the Triple Alliance between the cities of Tenochtitlan, Teotihuacan, and Tlacopan by settling on Lake Taxcaco and founding what has since become Mexico City. The Pyramids of the Sun and Moon and the Temple of Quetzalcoatl along the Avenue of the Dead in Teotihuacan are constructed to align with three stars in the constellation we call now Orion. The Great Pyramids in Giza, Egypt, built some 3,885 years before, are likewise aligned.